Welcome to GC Cars, my name is Eric. And I'm Jesse. And this is the new Cadillac XT4. All right, new XT4, freshly re fresh. Freshly refreshed. And uh, yeah, I have tested this entry level Cadillac a couple years ago before it was refreshed. Yeah, it wasn't that great. Like I didn't hate it, but it was, wasn't competitive. However, I think they made some major upgrades and we'll see where it ranks in terms of our subcompact luxury SUV second, but I think it might just have a shot at the king, the BMW X1. It's a hard one to beat. 100%. Really? And that's why we're gonna take a look at the X here first, then we're gonna take a look at the interior, and then we're gonna drive it in the end. We're gonna compare it and sum it up and see if Cadillac is back on top. Speaking of exterior, this color is kind of nice. Oh, I love it. Crystal <laughs> white tricoat. It's, I think, a $1,300 Canadian option, so it's not cheap, but it's beautiful. Like yeah. in the sunlight, it's, oh. like, it's like pearlescent, honestly. It's, it's really nice. Yeah, it's got all the sparkle, and because we have the sport, which, which is, is how I would do it. Yeah, we get all the blacked out accents everywhere and we have the monochromatic emblem package. So it's really like black and white themed, which I think looks great. The updated front end, really sharp. sharp. Yeah. Love the angles, love how it looks. I do think the sport package should have come with black rims. Like it's a black. It would complete it. Yeah. I, 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 I like these wheels. I just think black would look. These wheels just in black would be nice. Oh God, it'd be amazing. Uh, I don't really care much for the side profile of the XT4. I'll be entirely honest with you. I do care, however, uh, about the rear end. I think they could have just done a little more with this because this isn't really changed from before the refresh much. I don't hate it. It's just clearly not as aggressive as the front end. Yeah, I, if they would have just copied the angular look a little more, I think it would have looked nice. I think the only thing they really changed is these reflectors in yep. the back. They used to be just below the trunk and now they're just to the side of the trunk. So huge upgrade. <laughs> don't love it, don't hate it, but Agreed. do we love or hate the interior? Let's find out. Let's go. All right, inside the... Okay, yeah, there's one part that has I'm like, I'm like a DJ. <laughs> there's one part with questionable quality. However, otherwise, it's uh, pretty pretty normal, pretty decent. And I mean... I mean, I, I, I don't think decent's the word. I think pretty great. Dare I say this is controversial, the nicest subcompact luxury SUV on the market? Ever so slightly beating out the X1, which was beating out? I mean, fantastic. It, 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 it's the neck and neck. I looked at the X1, X1 again. This is just as good as the X1. Yeah, in, in most cars, you have to talk about which materials are leather. In this car, it's easier to talk about which aren't because there's only a few here that aren't leather. There's like, this is rubberized down here. Yeah, look. And then you got plastic and plastic. And that's pretty much it. Everything yeah. else is leather. This or... is beautiful. We got the optional, like, like tan color. Here, really like it. It looks great. I love the accents up here. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. Like, look, this is so plush. It's very nice. It's so plush. All the material signs. This is metal. This is metal here. This actual metal. Even our center console is wrapped, wrapped in leather. Everything is wrapped in leather. And our knee pads are soft. Like, this is absolutely fantastic. The only thing that I could say could be softer is the steering wheel. It's a little bit. Think? It's, it's not bad, I'm right. just saying. I, I, I'm i okay with it, but I can see where you're coming from. It's just like, this is far beyond anything Cadillac like, usually delivers. And we didn't talk about the seats yet. Oh yeah. I, I like how they look. Okay, so for, this leather is interesting. Yeah. It At first I was like, oh, this is a little dirty, but it's just very, more. it's more natural leather. They're going for like the aged look. Yeah, it's, it's a little like, you, you see some spotting on it and a bit of staining, and I think that's on purpose. You gotta decide if you like it or not. I think it's kind of cool. Comfortable, but a lot of adjustability in these seats as well. Heated, ventilated, massaging, not like amazing massage, but it has like a bit of uh, lumbar massage, which is nice. Uh, they're comfortable, electronic on both sides. USB-A, USB-C, we got a, a wireless charger, which I like the placement of. It doesn't take up too much real estate, yeah. easy to access. Plenty of usability. And let's talk about this. This screen is great. This is an evolution of the Escalade screen. And now instead of being three OLED screens, it is one enormous OLED screen. And God, it's beautiful. It's really nice. It might be my favorite infotainment in any... First of all, this right now, that's Android Auto. Yeah. The whole map, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, wireless. We can switch it, of course, to a gauge if we want, or just have a clean look. I love that. Um, we can also have Google Maps integrated because this is Android Automotive based, right? So you either connect with your with your phone wirelessly or you log in, have it all. You have the full Play Store. This is extremely fast. You can pretty fast. It's not okay. Yeah, this 
a, a teeny, yeah. this is like a hitch mm -hmm. in the movement. Okay, yeah. but overall it's pretty good. You have this controller if you want to use it like this, but look really at this, nice quality. Look at this OLED screen. Really nice quality screen. Nicest screen you've had in any car? Probably, yeah. So good. I, it's, it's beautiful. I love it. Series M, obviously, all that included. One gripe, if I have to have one, is if I want to go to my cameras, I have to tap here first and then tap on cameras which often takes two taps for some reason. But other than that... They are good quality cameras too. They are good quality cameras. Which someone didn't use because there's already some rash on one of them. Some curb Who did rash. It? Expose yourself. <laughs> uh, speaking of screens, digital review mirror screen. Love this. I think this should be standard in every car. Uh, like, it li like you literally see three times as much. I see more to the sides here than I see through my side mirrors. Like it is... They're safe. They, they, they increase, and we got heads up display. Heads up display. Uh, this is so much good. I am very surprised by what Calic delivered. Big monolithic. And the rear seat experience is pretty good. Yeah. Materials are just as nice up as in front, except for the center stack here, which is which, you know, fast a bit. Whatever, heated seats, uh, both sides, USB-A, USB-C as well. Pretty good headroom. If you're above six feet, you might be a little tight back there. Mm. And of course, subcompact, so the fifth passenger adds more of a child seat. Mm -hmm. And usability-wise, with the second row up, we get about 22 and a half cubic feet of space, which is Okay. In and line. Yeah, with the second row down, you get just shy of 50 cubic feet of space. It's okay. It's not like the middle X1 of the has pack. more. It's middle yeah. of the pack. Middle of the pack. It's not going to wow you, uh, unlike the rest of the interior, which is going to wow you. But are the driving dynamics going to wow us out on the road? Let's push this four cylinder to the limit. Let's go. <laughs> All right, out in the XT4, we are in sport mode, uh, which puts our range in an italic. Oh, oh, that's how you know it's serious. That's so how you know you're serious. So, brake torque. My head stayed Whoa. where it was. <laughs> there we go. That was, uh, yeah. Brake no torque. <laughs> <laughs> now it's going. Now it's going. <laughs> that was an underwhelming start there. Yes. Okay, it's, it's not a fast machine. Clearly not. But if you're driving it out on the highway, I found it to have all the power and torque that I want. It was actually zippy enough for me to you know, legally and responsibly zip through traffic. Speaking of power. We have a two liter turbocharged inline four. I know this is uh, unexpected, right? Who who has that these days in cars? Whew. Let's go back to the tour. Um, producing 235 horsepower, 258 pound feet of torque sent through all four wheels through a nine speed auto. Um, Transmission's pretty smooth. Mostly, although sometimes I, I found it to be a little like, very occasionally it's a little bit jerky. This drivetrain is okay sometimes a little noisy i find i find it noisy personally. nothing on the x1 though like the x1 was <laughs> hands down way better and it had character and it was like <laughs> yeah it had those turbo sounds like for yeah. me that that wins over my heart every it was time. it was quicker it was better and in a lot of regards so drive -tru this is fine and if i go to my if i use my oled screen oops, uh to uh to look up i'm right, sitting right now at nine and a half liters per 100 kilometers uh, over 750 kilometers because I took this like everywhere. I, I saw like the eclipse in this. Just wanted to relate to a recent event that's going to be two months old by the time this video is out. I feel like you can get it down. At, I think 9.5 for a four cylinder. I mean, I, you can get it down. I hope so. Yeah, let's put it back though into sport mode, which is going to put us into all wheel drive. And we're going to see how this baby handles. You have Grab a handle. handle. I have a handle. Handling handle test as usual. Right. Toss her in. With honor steering. Oh, yeah, good though. I had to take a different bit of a different line. For yeah, this a little one. wider. Uh, but it, it, it's, it's, right. it's not. It's track ready. No kidding. Yeah, it's not fun to drive. <laughs> no, not at all. It's it's meant to be relaxing and easy to drive. And I think for that one, let's switch seats. Get mm -hmm. you behind the driver's seat and talk about daily driving. Let's go. The sound of this engine when you're accelerating is just... <sighs> yeah, it's, it's it's a little too noisy and... And it's not a good a good noise. No, it's not quite XC40 bad though. The XC40 B5, we had, I was, that was the king of noise in terms of its two liter luxury. Luxury. <laughs> luxury. Um, and I think unfortunately that a little too noisy translates to the general driving experience as well. Yeah, so road noise is kind of, I don't know if it's the tires, to be totally fair here. Yes, it's we're still on winners, uh, but so are some of the other cars we've driven. The X1 was not on winners, which is, yes, uh, but I think it's just, it is a touch noisier than the X1, even on comparable tires. And I think the suspension... It's on the firmer side. It's a little on the firmer side. Like, like all these small little jitters are yeah. still out on the road. 
that don't get absorbed perfectly well. I would have liked it a little softer overall. Speaking of soft though. Yeah, these brakes are actually pretty progressive. Yeah, I like, I like using them. It's not over boosted, it's like... No, they're quite nice. And steering is fairly light. Oh, feel some vibrations there. It's all the raw power. Yeah, there's just there's just <laughs> not a lot going in here on here with this powertrain. Yeah, it's um, it's not it's not. I'm trying X1. to be excited about it, but it's just yeah, not much to be excited it's, about. It's, it's not an exciting drivetrain whatsoever. Uh, talking a little bit about tech though, uh, specifically any tech that's noteworthy. We talked about the OLED screen. We talked about the rear screen. Uh, we have adaptive cruise control and emergency braking and all that. But I think the only thing that stands out here that we don't have in other cars is we have a little warning if we're in park, for example, if any objects are approaching from the left or the right, be that cars, cyclists, or even pedestrians. Which in Toronto is a good thing because it happens a lot. Yeah, and it's, it's actually a really good warning or even if you, you know, maybe you park in a neighborhood that's not so good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you see that warning when someone's approaching it. It's, a, it's actually kind of neat. And unlike the BMW, if they open your door, it's not gonna shut your car off. Yeah, you can actually <laughs> drive with the door open. I know, it's terrible. You can like, ride it's the so whip. dangerous. <laughs> but no, I actually appreciate it. There's no, no, no nannies like that. Yeah. Which leaves us with the conclusion. The make or break for all of these cars is always the price. And I think the price is gonna be one of its hindrances here. Yeah, because we're looking at top spec, fully optional now. We have about two grand in like optics and all that, but the BMW also has optic packages to be fair. And we're looking at just shy of $64,000 Canadian. If we compare this to the other SUV, luxury SUVs, uh, all fully spec, all 2024 model like this, we're looking at about uh, two or 3,000 more than an XC40. We're looking at about 2,000 more than an X1. So it just comes down to what you value more. I think so. This is probably a little cheaper over lifetime compared to a BMW. I think the servicing and all that, because this is GM. If you're leasing it, it's free maintenance for a BMW for the most part anyway. So That's true. To, are you financing, leasing, all these things are going, you have to take into consideration. All right, but let's rank the subcompact SUVs, luxury SUVs that we had. So we had a sample size of four, the Alfa Tonale, the Volvo XC40 B5, yeah. the BMW X1, and the new XT4 we're in. How would you rank them? So first of all, before I rank them, I have to say that there's always going to be subjective and objective things right. that justify or quantify your decisions. Mm -hmm. For me, BMW one, this is number two, Tonali number three, and then the Volvo number four. Uh, I'm gonna sign that, just like that. I think the- Do you agree? Yeah. Um, Volvo is a little far off because I, it wasn't- The value. A, it wasn't a bad car, but it just wasn't the value. And the Tonali, even though it's not as nice, it was, was just so much cheaper, which placed it on three, and it was fun. Uh, this is way closer to the X1 than I thought, especially the interior is honestly fantastic. Yep. It just loses out on a bit of refinement in terms of noise and suspension, the drivetrain's not as good, and the BMW build quality is still untouched. And so for far. me, the aesthetics of the and the exterior of the BMW win for me. Okay, I I'm impartial to that I like both. Right. Uh, but yeah, I would still say if you're looking for a subcompact, get the X1. But of course, if you want to support, if you're in North America, you want to support a local economy. This is built in Kansas. Mm -hmm. The, I, I would not fault anyone for getting the XT4. It's uh, especially if you don't care about fast or fun driving. Fantastic car. Yep. Uh, really, really surprised by what yep. Cadillac has done here. For me, it's just the drivetrain. That's the biggest thing for me. Yeah. Where the BMW just takes it. I agree. Speaking of drivetrain, oh, that, that start is, is just yeah. It's, it's just horrible. Fun. That's that's like two seconds up to seven seconds. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyhow, <laughs> that is the Cadillac XT4. Thank you for watching this video on GC Cars. Pure testosterone! Oh. Woo! What the f is this piece of <laughs> shit? If you guys like the video, don't forget to hit the bell and subscribe. Uh, should I just drive into a tree now? Or? And we'll see you next Friday at 8.15 a.m. Eastern for a whole <laughs> lot more fun. Bye-bye. <laughs>